Alright, what's up everyone, it's me Barkey, and I'm here with another RimWorld video, but it's not a mod showcase or anything, it's just kind of like a test video, kind of testing out stuff. I saw a thread on r slash RimWorld, which is a subreddit for the game, and I spent a lot of time there. And one of the questions was, should you use geothermal vents to heat a base in an ice sheet? Now, that is something that might seem obvious to some of you, but maybe it's not for newbies, and, you know, it's not clear for everyone. And to me, it's been pretty obvious the entire time. I just use them without even thinking. I use geothermal vents, they're great. They give heat, but is the geothermal vent worth the trouble? Because I'll admit that it is a bit of a problem when it comes to consistency in heating. So what I've gone ahead and done is set up these two rooms over here. It's got one geothermal generator, which I can just remove. It doesn't make a difference. Now we lost power. That's bad. I've got a, so I've got this vent over here, and then I've got a room with two heaters in it. And now, let me put a heater in this room. It's one heater. What I was trying to do was to get an, a rough idea of how much heat the steam geezer puts out. And from what I could tell, it was not that much. It was a good amount, but it was about one heater. So this makes sense to me that they're getting similar results. The problem is the consistency of the vent. So look, you see it's not putting out any heat right now. So the current heat is provided by what it's put out before this, plus this heater, which also puts out heat at maybe four or five times the rate that this does. Obviously, everything in RimWorld is done in ticks. Like in Minecraft, it's like every 30 ticks, it'll, it'll heat up a room a bit. So yeah, and then it goes, does its animation. Sometime. There, okay, there we go. Now you can see the heat's on the rise, it's at 18 degrees, 19, 20, 21. Goes up to 23 and then it drops down. Then it drops down pretty quickly. What's happening? Okay, let me get rid of that. Then you can see it drops back down to 19. Now let me get rid of this heater so you can I can show you what it looks like and then I'll just minus the heat a bit. So I put it to minus 1 degrees, outside is negative 21, just to give you guys a clear test. Yeah, and I'm going to let it heat up. Oh my goodness, this timer, <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, the freaking attack timer was on. So let's see what it goes up to. So you can see it's around 5 degrees now. wonder if it'll raise past that. Okay, 10, 13. So you can see it's it's not exactly reliable, but it does provide about one heater's worth of heat, I'd say. Yeah, I'm wondering if it can reach anything past this. As I've said though, the problem is the consistency. This doesn't happen often. I'm using four times speed, which is the dev mode speed. And it's only giving me about one heater's worth. Now that is free <laughs> free energy in a sense. Because you kind of want to put a power, you want to put a geothermal generator on there later anyways. So this is a small room. This is the smallest room you can get with two spaces for a geothermal generator. It's 12 by 12. So I made these false spaces to give you an idea. Now this is an equal test. They're both exactly the same size. They have the exactly same dimensions. This one is just, I had a geothermal generator here before, so this is around that. In every way, they are the same. Now, if I look here, it is negative 30 outside, negative 14 inside, zero degrees inside here. So it's negative 30, negative 15, zero. So what the geothermal generator is effectively giving you is 15 degrees. And this is where it counts on these bases, where, a, where the intermittent heating is not that big of a deal. So let me put another heater inside both of these. You want to heat your base to around 20 degrees if possible, but on an ice sheet that isn't always possible. In fact, I'm usually happy with 5 or 6 degrees. So yeah, it's 13, still sticking around 0. Escape pod, that guy's going to die. feel bad for you, man. But yeah, you can see it's still sticking around 0. It's not really picking up much, and that's because the heating coming out of this is not heating as much as it did in here. Why is that? Well, because this is a way bigger room. That's the only reason. And as you can see inside these rooms, it's still freezing cold. Warmer than these ones, though. But yeah, it's a much bigger room. 
the heat doesn't go as far. Rimworld tries to simulate accurate temperature, which is great. I like it. I really appreciate it. Not complaining. Just saying that it tries to accurate, tries to be as accurate as possible. And this is the result. I'm pretty happy with it. So should you use a geothermal vent? A steam geezer? Yes, you should. It's weird to, me weird to see a question like that. Not every room is going to be like this one. Very rarely will you have a, a 12 by 12 room around your vent, unless you're playing in like a jungle area where it's very easy to raid it, because look how far away this is from the main base. You would want to protect it. But as for having a base around it, that isn't, <laughs> that's not really the case, so that's why this question is weird to me. That's 8 degrees. It's 15 degrees hotter than this. 15 degrees on an ice sheet is a huge deal. And as for the consistency that I saw, as I said, this is a much bigger area. You usually have a big base. You'll usually have a big base. Shame, dude. Can we rescue this guy? Yeah, so that's my, that's my consensus. I hope this helps people when they're deciding that these things are great for ice sheets. And you absolutely should be abusing the mechanic as much as you can. Because they're permanent. You cannot get rid of them, so you may as well use them. And just in case someone is curious, if I put a geothermal vent, a uh, geothermal generator on it, it doesn't change how much heat it puts out. So yeah, look, that's a good 11, 10 degrees inside there, 2 degrees inside here. That's 12 degrees hotter. That 12 degrees hotter is a lifesaver. <laughs> it really is. Of course, I'm using both the same amount of heaters in both of them. So one heat is about 15 degrees, and you're getting the same from one geothermal vent. In fact, more over here, look at that. Ooh, okay, I want to test something before we end the video. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I hope this did help some people, though. So what I want to try do is do this. Let's go 12 by 12 again. Do that. Let's see how much we can, let's see how much heat we can get out of if we abuse the heater glitch. I messed this up, didn't I? Yeah, I did. There we go. Alright, so take a look. Negative 18 inside here. Negative 19. Same temperatures. Out okay, a little bit hotter than outside. Inside here, it's 4 degrees, then it shoots up to 50. So... Put the vent in, see what it does. Look at that, dude. <laughs> That's 21 degrees. 21 degrees constant. Let's see how... It... Alright, well, there you go. That's two heaters worth using this vent system. Uh, which is pretty damn awesome, actually. Pretty damn cool. I wonder how much I can get if I do this. Ooh, I didn't even get 2,000 there. Alright, 2,000. 40 degrees <laughs> with two heaters. 40 degrees with two heaters. Let's put one there. Alright, let's just say the steam geese is one heater. Let's see the difference. That's 50 degrees Celsius, reaching about 15, 16. We'll reach 21. 21 degrees Celsius with two heaters. 4550 with one heater, one steam geezer using this thing. Pretty cool. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, if the videos aren't coming as often as they do, just know that I'm in South Africa. So, yeah, I'm having a nice holiday. I love you all. Thank you very much for the nice comments I got on my channel update. You guys are awesome. Bye-bye.